So in today's video, we've got another installment of the best travel gear under $100. This has definitely been a crowd favorite of the channel, and I'm so happy it is because these are a ton of fun to make. We've got a new set of items for summer, so without any further ado, let's just dive right into it. First up, we've got the Lookout Belt from Arcade Belts. I've had this for a month or two. It's a belt that's designed for travel, but has actually since become my main everyday belt as well, just because it's so comfortable, and that's kind of the main number one thing I want to talk about this in regards to traveling. It is a stretchy recycled yarn material, so it makes it really comfortable to wear, especially if you're on a plane for extended hours or traveling around. Just comfort becomes a little bit more of a priority in those situations, and this thing is extremely comfortable because it's stretchy. I don't know about any of you, but since like stretchy jeans and pants have become so mainstream and normal, I just can't go back and I'm all about anything that stretches. Maybe it's my advanced age. Who knows? But this thing is great, super comfortable, recycled materials. The other big thing for this for travel is that it's actually a metal free belt. The belt's actually designed to not need any adjustments. So when you first get it, you can kind of set your waist size and then it just clips in with the buckle and you don't need to worry about it. Because it's plastic, you can go through TSA or airport security and you don't need to worry about taking off your belt. And it's only 40 bucks and definitely for a metal free belt, this thing is very comfortable and looks really nice. They've got a ton of different varieties and options on their website as well. So I'll put a link to this one, but check out the other ones. They actually have a Smokey the Bear belt that I thought about getting, but decided just to get something that would be a little more universal. From there, we have the ESR Halo Lock Charger. I got this thing a few months ago. I have mentioned it on the channel before, but it hasn't made an appearance in this series, so you might not have seen it. It's a MagSafe charger that has a built-in kickstand. I used to have a separate kickstand that I used for traveling all of the time, and this is really great just because it's a multi-purpose item. So instead of bringing a separate charger and a separate stand, you can do this if you have MagSafe. I think it's for iPhone 12 and 13 as of now. So if you have a newer iPhone, this is an excellent option. It's a 7.5 watt charger, so it's a little bit slower than the OEM MagSafe charger, but I haven't really had any issues with that. So that might be a deal breaker depending on your situation. But I've just really fallen in love with this thing. I love having multi-purpose items that save space. It can save money, convenient. Um, yeah, and this thing has just worked really flawlessly since I got it. And it's a USB-C connector as well, so it's gonna be a little bit more universal. You might be able to just bring along USB-C cables instead of worrying about lightning and micro USB and USB-C and all of those. So it's just a really nice, convenient option. It's 25 bucks as well, so not very expensive either. Would definitely recommend this one. The next item on the list is not actually an item, but a service as well as the sponsor of this week's video. I want to thank Surfshark for helping support the channel as well as making an excellent product. If you're not already familiar with Surfshark, they make a VPN service or virtual private network. Essentially, a VPN, if you're not familiar, allows you to browse the web safely and securely by encrypting your data and masking your identity on the web. If you're someone that often uses public Wi-Fi and public networks like us travelers, or if you go to restaurants or cafes or coffee shops pretty often to work, you can have some serious compromises to your data and online security. Surfshark plays a very important role in keeping you safe and secure online, especially when you're on those public networks. Outside of the very important security aspects of Surfshark, you actually get a few extra perks as well, in particular with streaming services. Lots of streaming content out there gets geo-restricted to certain countries. An example for an American like me, I can't watch the US version of The Office on Netflix. I can change my location to the UK or Canada and easily stream The Office on Netflix without having to sign up for any extra streaming services. Whether you only travel with your phone or if you're bringing a tablet or laptop with you, it's really easy to use across any of your devices. You can use code JoshFen in the link in the description below and get 83% off and three extra months free if you want to sign up. I would highly encourage you to check it out. So huge thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this week's video. Be sure to check the link in the description below. Past couple of years, I've really found my love for gaming again and with all of of the game streaming options that you have nowadays. It's really easy to play video games while you're on the go. I finally got myself a setup to be able to bring my Xbox controller with me and play through xCloud gaming while I'm traveling. This is something that's entirely dependent on the trip. A lot of vacations I probably wouldn't bring this with me, but in certain situations it is going to be so great. Uh, first up, I have this clip to be able to mount your phone onto your controller. 
So this is the setup. This thing is $15 from a company called Moga I found on Amazon. There are a ton of different options out there. I'm sure most of them would work, but after doing some research, this was the one I picked. And to be honest, it's a little thinner and flimsier than I expected, but it does seem to be performing perfectly well. It seems to be really secured in place. The phone mount works with my bigger phone. So if you have, you know, the 12 Pro Max or 13 Pro Max or one of the larger Android phones, this does seem to have room to spare even. So you should be good to go with this and it definitely locks in place. I haven't had any issues with this at all. It's been really fun to have this directly mounted onto the controller instead of having to worry about placing it somewhere. For 15 bucks, I've been really happy with this one. I'm not sure if they make a PlayStation variant, but I'll put it in the description if I find it. And to pair with it, I got this controller case. This is from a brand called Sisma. I'd never heard of Sisma before, but looking at some good reviews, I felt pretty confident. And after getting it, it does seem to hold up to all of the good reviews that I on Amazon. It's nice that it has some cutouts for the joystick so you're not going to worry about damaging the controller. These new Series X controllers are obnoxiously fragile. I actually just had to do a warranty claim on my right bumper button that broke. I've used my Xbox One and OG Xbox and 360 controllers for years and have never broken one or had any issues. So it's unfortunate that the durability has gone down, but that just means we need to take care of these a little bit more. Uh, this case is 17 bucks. I do know for sure that they have a PlayStation variant as well, so I'm sure the quality is pretty similar as well. Really solid case. It wouldn't take up too much space or bulk in your bag, and you'd be able to play games on the go without having to worry about touchscreen controls. I know I don't talk about my gaming on here very often, but I was actually a little sick for the past couple of weeks, and I've been holed up at home playing a ton of Subnautica. Never played it before up until now. That game is incredible. It's on Game Pass too, so I would check it out if you haven't yet. But moving on from there for the non-gamers, next Next up, we have Darn Tough Socks. I know I've talked about Darn Toughs before and everyone has heard of them, but I just really can't stress enough. This is such an excellent investment for anyone that travels. This is a great gift idea. You know, my first pair of Darn Toughs were actually gifted to me from my sister, like, eight years ago and I still have them and still use them all the time. But I have a handful of pairs of these and they just hold up really well. Two years of backpacking and two years of travel on these and they are still in like pretty much perfect condition. Merino wool is really great too because it doesn't smell and it's antimicrobial. So you don't have to worry about washing these after every wear. I know that sounds a little gross, but once you try it, you kind of understand and get it. So fight me in the comments if you want. But yeah, these are great, really inexpensive. They're there are a couple of other pairs of socks that I've tried and used that I think are a little more comfortable but just don't have the durability. So if you're only going to get one pair of merino socks or travel socks, I would highly suggest the Darn Tufts. Any of them are going to do fine. They have a lifetime warranty. Um, yeah, you really can't go wrong. These are the quarter hiker cushion socks, so a little bit beefier for travel, but I use these for traveling and for backpacking. So I got those mainly for backpacking because that is more important, taking care of your feet while you're walking, you know, miles and miles and miles. Next, we have an updated version of my favorite battery bank. This is the Nightcore NB10000, and this is actually the version two. <laughs> Nightcore saw me raving about the NB10000 on here for so many videos, and I bought those myself. I have two of them. I use them for backpacking and a ton of travel stuff, but they'd reached out and asked if I wanted to see their version two. I was a little worried when I heard that they were changing it because I didn't want them to mess up a good and essentially perfect thing for me. Uh, luckily, they understood that, and the only thing that they changed was adding fast charging. So it now does 20 watt fast charging. It's still the same weight. I weighed it myself just to confirm. It's about 150 grams or 5.3 ounces. It's the lightest weight for capacity battery bank on the market. I think that is still the case. Be sure to let me know if I'm wrong in the comments. But so if you really care about the weight of your bag, I would highly suggest you check this out and pick one up. If you already have the version one of this though, I don't think it's worth the upgrade unless you need a second or an extra battery bank. The fast charging is nice, but that wouldn't be a big deal breaker for me for the money. They're the same weight, the same size, the same form factor. They just add.
added the fast charging in this. So a great option if you don't have one, but I probably wouldn't spend the money to upgrade just for that unless fast charging is the most important thing in the world to you. Next item is something I also bought mainly for backpacking, but thought this would be a really unique and cool idea for a lot of you on your travels. Uh, this is the Hydropack Stash water bottle. It collapses in on itself, and this is going to be a 750 ml bottle. They do make a one liter version as well, but I wanted to get something that would fit my backpacking filter threads. Um, so depending on what size you need, you have two there, but this thing is 20 bucks and just the idea of having a collapsible water bottle could probably come in handy for so many of you. I'll usually carry my Lark bottle when I'm traveling and I have a memo bottle that I use a lot for day to day use in my EDC, but I can definitely... <laughs> Sorry, apologies for my cat disrupting here. All right, we're just gonna ignore him. All right, anyway, so yeah, this thing is really great. You know, if you have a really small bag and want the option to have water, but you're not necessarily someone that's always bringing a big bottle of water with you, this is a really great option. Also good, you know, if you wanna fill up at the airport, but you don't wanna have to lug around a full bottle or something. Um, this thing's been really good though. I've used it for backpacking. I haven't taken it on any actual like traveling trips, but just backpacking, but so far so good would definitely recommend it if this is a setup that could be useful for you. My cat Wolfie is particularly rambunctious today. He's got zoomies all around my office right now. But uh, next up, we have another favorite of mine that has been in my dop kit for some time, and that is the Beard Brand Utility Bar. Um, I just restocked these, so I have a few extra that are still in package, so you don't have to look at you know my used soap. The utility bars are excellent. I've used these in my dop kit for a couple of years now, but have since started using them in my everyday use and my home shower. Um, they're really nice though because they work for your hair and your body and your face and it's not just some cheap you know grocery store three-in-one type of soap. It's more natural ingredients. It's a very thoughtful process in making these so I trust that they are good and in my experience they've worked really well for all three. It's great to have a dop kit that's all solids. I know I've made a video showing my all solids dop kit before but even if you're still bringing liquids with you it's just a convenient option to Again, another multi-purpose item that works really well. I also really love all of their scents. I've been using the Temple Smoke. In the past, I've used their Tree Ranger. Um, I used four vices, although that's getting discontinued. But I would highly recommend that you check these out. They have a bunch of other great stuff too. Travel Comb and Travel Brush. I really love those. I debated putting them in here, but this is definitely the, the biggest and most important item on the list here. If you find yourself doing some road tripping this summer, uh, this is the Able Carry able cooler um, I've had this for a few months now and it is just really excellent. It's a little cooler that'll hold about a six pack and it's actually designed to fit into the Able Carry backpacks. Um, I actually use the Able Carry Daybreaker as a day hiking pack pretty often and my wife and I a lot of times will bring Summit beers if she goes hiking with me. It has removable dividers in here so you can take those out if you want to use this as a lunch bag for work or something but definitely for road tripping. You know, keep some drinks in the cooler for the car while you're driving. Depending on where you're going, a lot of my road trips are more like outdoor activity focused. Just great to have a nice little cooler that's not going to be too bulky or heavy. It's also not very expensive. This is $56 and it's made out of X-Pack, uh, this sort of white camo color. Uh, when I first got it, it looks like it's wet almost. I don't love the color scheme on it, if I'm being honest, but it's definitely a great cooler and it's worked really well the past few months of testing it. I would definitely recommend if you're more of a road trip traveler. Um, my wife and I got a car last year and we've still been doing quite a bit of that during the summer months. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of Best Travel Gear Under $100 though. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you have any new items you've been testing or trying that you'd recommend to me or to the group here. I always love to get those discussions going in the comments so leave that down below. Uh, thank you so much for watching though and I will talk to you in the next one.